Hello and welcome to the broadcast, folks, of Deep Cough in the Deep. I'm your host, Jeremy Lopez, and I want to take a couple of moments to talk to you about how love works. And the reason why I say how love works is because a lot of people in relationships, that is, how a lot of people ask me in life coaching, which, by the way, if you want to do a life coaching session with me, I would love to set you up an appointment for one. But a lot of people in life coaching talk to me a lot and they say, I don't know how to love my, my, my spouse. I don't know how to love my wife. I don't know how to love my, my husband. What do I do? Here's one of the things I teach people is point number one is this, and we'll just use this point for this broadcast today, in how to love, how to truly love your partner is understanding the whole person. You've got to learn to love the whole person. You need to write that down. Learn to love the whole person. You know, there are things in my life I've realized that we can overlook, and there's certain things in life you just need to not overlook. And when you're dealing with a long-lasting covenant relationship within an individual, whether it's your your your, your wife wife, your husband, you need to look and examine before you marry them, is this who I want to be with the rest of my life? Yes. Is this what I want to be with the rest of my life? And all of a sudden you begin to understand it's not just about the looks it's or the personality, it's about everything else of them. Now are you going to have little quirks, so to say, of things that maybe, you know, like we always say, you know, the toothpaste is, you know, top is on wrong or, or, or you know, or this is, you know, over here wrong or whatever, it's on the left side instead of the right side. These are just natural things you're going to have to learn to just laugh at and, and, and find the unique expression within you know your spouse to be able to say, that's not a problem for me. And learn to love their unique di- diversities. But the other thing you've got to grab a hold of, the main thing is to know if you truly love this person or basically know and, and to make it a long lasting impression is learn to love the whole person. That means you're going to have to learn to love them of who they are, what they are, what they do, and what they don't do. Uh, you know, you're going to have dis- disagreements concerning, you know, certain movies. Well, I like, you know, scary, or I like f- comedy, or I like funny, or I like romance. These are natural, normal things. But when you are learning to love someone, you've got to love, you've got to learn to love the whole person, the fullness of who that person is. It's not about what I love, man, she's hot, but I can't stand her personality. Well, guess what, folks? That will never last because looks will change. And you learn to understand that even personalities throughout time can change. And guess what? When you're learning to grow it together as far as when you're in sync with one another and you truly love the whole person of who they are, you can learn to grow together because your personality, yeah, it's going to change a little bit. Your character, yeah, it's going to be tweaked a little bit because as you get older, you gain more wisdom. You gain much knowledge. You gain through the things that, that embarrassed you. You gain through the things that taught you victory. You gain through life's challenges of understanding, you know, uh, uh, where we are as far as financially, you know, we don't have a lot of money now. Five, ten years from now, you could be loaded. You could be rich as ever, you know. Or you, maybe you come from we met and we had plenty of money, so we're going to buy this nice home before we get married. And all of a sudden, you find yourself saying, "All oh, that's now down the drain because the marriage cost me so much money." And so when you look at that, you're going to have to remember you've got to learn to love the entire whole, full person that stands before you, and you're going to have to learn to love them through the good, the bad, and the ugly. Which means there will be challenging times, but as you begin to love the whole person, you begin to get to know how they respond to situations of life. You know, if you fir- if you first meet someone and all of a sudden you go on several dates and you're like, yep, this could be the one. I, I totally see that happening for-, for her or him or whatever, and you're beginning to like that, but all of a sudden, out of the blue, this this person begins to just snap, and this person has just a horrible view of how they view people. Maybe they treat the waitress or the waiter bad and just out time Time after time, it's uh, they might love you, but people around them that they don't know, they just treat like trash. They treat horrible. And I know people like that. I've met people who just treat people so rude as if they're called to serve them. And you're called to wait on me as a waiter, so you will do as I say. I, you know, I'm the one that's important here. I'm the one paying your, your paycheck, so to say. And people have that attitude. You know what I tell people all the time? It's things like that. If someone is damaging someone else, then I always reconsider my, my value, re evaluate my, my situation with that person because I want someone who loves the unlovable. Now, even though we, I don't like that phrase because everybody's actually lovable, 
It's that place where we begin to look and say, those who perceive, no one wants anything to do with that person. You know, even those who perceive that, I want to be able to, to find someone in my life or your life or everyone else's life that makes sure that they treat people that when you're not looking, they treat them with value, love, honor, and respect. And guess what? Because if someone that you're maybe going to hook up with as far as getting married or ask them out on a date or whatever, and if, if you know that they are who they are behind closed doors with other people, then guess what? That's the person for you. Because you've got to learn to love the whole person. And the loving the whole person means I love them of how they treat other people. Because if they treat other people when you're not looking bad, guess what, folks? They're going to, they're going to take that right on into the relationship with you. And eventually, down the road, that same ugliness that's going to come out through other people when you're not looking will eventually come out to you when you are looking. And so you have to remember, it's not always about loving the outside of a person or loving their personality or loving their smile. All that's wonderful. But you have to learn to love the entire person. And when you learn to love the entire entity of who that person is, and you can learn to deal with it with things that maybe you find not disturbing but cute, that's a great sign. You never want to get with somebody that says, that really disturbs me, but I can overlook that. No, if something disturbs you, folks, that's a red flag to say, I'm not sure about this. If something alters the way you think at that moment, you need to reevaluate your relationship. If something brings a smile on your face of something you don't understand, that's a great sign. If something puts a frown on your face because it disturbs you, to, uh, that alters an emotion in you because of something they did, guess what? You need to re- rethink. You need to restructure You know your, your dating capacity because that's not healthy. You want to be able to know, do I love this person? You know, yeah, they look good. I'll get that. But do I like their personality? Yeah, get that too. Do I like their character? Absolutely. Do I like who they are when, you know, through maybe what other people are telling me in a good way? Yeah. Do I like how they do this and do that? Yeah. You have to learn to love the entire whole person. And when you learn to love the entire whole person, guess what, folks? You're setting yourself up for a good spouse the rest of your life. Because what you're doing then is vice versa. When both of you learn to love the whole person, then you know there's not a major sacrifice sacrifice going on that one day they're going to snap and say, I've had enough. I can't deal with this. I've dealt with it too long. How many marriages end because somebody says, I can't deal with this any longer? How many marriages end because somebody turns around and says, I, I've, you know, I've put up with this long enough. Isn't that the key words we hear on TV all the time? I've put up with you long enough. What are they saying? I've put up with this or that mentality. Not actually the person, but I put, I put up with this long enough. And that's, that should never be. You should always make sure you love the person in their fullness. That way you never turn around one day and there's not a major sacrifice going on. There's not a major... You know, something you've overlooked. Because when you overlook it now, guess what? It's going to just come out stronger and stronger to, to where might, right now you might overlook it. But eventually, what you've overlooked is going to become strong to you. It's like little foxes spoiling the vine. It's the little tiny things that you look at and you say, that's not a big deal. It's just a little fox. But it's the little foxes that actually eat the fullness of the vine. It's the little things that will rock your world one day. And you're going to have to remember, right now, it might not affect you because it's small. But what, the, what does the Bible say? When you're faithful in the small things, God will make you faithful and ruler, ruler, ruler over many things, which means the small things do count, negatively or positively. And so never overlook the small things. God actually looks at us in the small things. And so if it's good or bad or ugly, God looks at that and says, if I see the small things, you shouldn't overlook the small things either. And because the small things will eventually, once they're fed att- attention, the small things will eventually turn into big things. And one day you'll have to make a big decision out of something that you perceived one day down the road in the past where it's just something small. What If it's small, it's going to become large. So never find yourself, quote unquote, overlooking things. Find yourself at a place where you're looking and you're saying, you know what? I know I can't deal with this. And so I need to move on. And that, that way you know if I have if I love you body, soul, and spirit, if I see you in the fullness of who you are, and I'm, I'm happy with everything. And the other things, some things I just laugh at that are cute. Some things I, li- I, I look at your diversity and I just think it's amazing. Whether I'm into it or not, I just love your diversity. Then you've looked at the whole person, then you, you will learn to love them the rest of your life. You'll be compatible with that person and vice versa for them with you the rest of your life. The, anything you have to put up with, 
with, anything you feel as if I just can't deal with that, but eventually it'll go away. That's not the kind of person you want to be with. You want to be with a person that doesn't, doesn't always agree with you either, but someone also that doesn't always disagree with you as well. Someone that actually will sharpen the iron in you. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. You want to be with someone who will you sharpen each other in a healthy, respectable, loving way. It's not something, hey, this is demented, this is distorted, and and you know we're going to sharpen each other in this area. No, that's not that's not biblical. You sharpen in thing in areas that you can help someone else in, and you make them stronger. You make each other stronger. Something that is growing in a healthy way. If something's growing in a demented way, that's not iron sharpening iron. Iron sharpening iron is when you sharpen one another to improve who they are. Improve the the amazing thing that you saw small. Let it become big in a healthy way. If that small thing is something that needs to be grown out and you see the potential in the small thing, that's iron sharpening iron. So today before we dismiss in the broadcast, I want you to begin to run uh, run away with the mentality to know, you know, what does love do? How do I love this person? I'm in a relationship. What do I need to do? These are points that will help you in your evolutionary process of knowing who you're supposed to be with within your life. So until our next broadcast, I want to encourage you, go and and, and find today some things that you see, see about yourself and begin to understand who you are and love that person. That way the person that comes along that's supposed to be with you will love what you love as well. So until our next broadcast, have an amazing day. I also want to encourage you today, please, 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 go to our website, identitynetwork.net. We've just released our brand new School of Law of Attraction. Folks, the School of Law of Attraction will blow your mind. I've had so many people ask me, please, I'm begging you, put out a course on the Law of Attraction. And it's a biblical, foundational um, uh, course. It's a four-week course, and it's probably one of the first or only ones I know of in the Christian community. And don't get hooked up on the words, the terminology Law of Attraction. Words are just that, folks. They're just words. The, whether no, If you call it the Law of Attraction, if you call it Attraction, if you call it the Desires of Your Heart, it doesn't matter. It's all the same same definition that's in biblical terminology that was written thousands of years ago. And I can prove to you from thoughts becoming things, we talk about the power of God supernatural wants to be attracted to you. Let me give you a great example. It's the Mary and Elizabeth. Mary and Elizabeth were attracted supernaturally together, like attracts like, because they were both impregnated by a supernatural experience. Even though their both experiences were different in nature, one was by a husband that they didn't perceive or even think they would have a child. The other one was by the Holy Spirit. But guess what? Both encounters, both uh, both of them becoming impregnated by, by something was still supernatural. But they were attracted together because like attracts like and it's supernatural combustion attracted them together. Uh, what I call the law of attraction, the desires of your heart, whatever. When you're listening to the voice of the Good Shepherd, it'll attract you to what you need to be attracted to. And what happened is when that power source of both parties parties came together, something leaped within her belly. Folks, let me tell you something. I can teach you not from some faith point of view, but from my reality, my experience, where my faith manifested and became whole in my life. I can tell you and train you from my personal experience how my faith in, in knowing these principles of the secrets and mysteries of the, that are locked in the Bible that deal with the power of attraction will get you what you want. I'm living proof of this, folks. Not a faith statement. This is my proof. This is my reality. And I see whatever it is I'm desiring manifest in my life because of the perfect will of God. And I'm going to give you the secrets how to bring that and draw that into your life. Other, other, uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about is this. Through this course of Law of Attraction, I'm giving you some bonus CDs as an introductory here, okay? If you order the Law of Attraction school in the next week or two, you will get with it the bonus two CD set series called the Law of Creation. I'm including in this course free in the course. Plus, I'm not done yet. Plus, besides all the CDs, the DVD, you, uh, you, the book you'll get that I've written for this course, you'll get... Um 
the two sets, uh, the two city set series law of, law of creation. We will also throw in there a full length instrumental CD that we created here at Identity Network that are supernaturally charged up that will begin to illuminate the power of God of the supernatural ability to come upon you even while you're in entertaining the Law of Attraction course. In other words, you can play this instrumental CD during you, your study times or anytime you want to and I, I guarantee you to open up the spirit realm for you to see the orbs and the lights of God and the supernatural presence of God coming upon you to help attract in your life what you need. Folks, I'm telling you, I never give free stuff away when you purchase something, but this is the moment to take advantage of it. If you want the School of Law of Attraction, you'll get all the bonus stuff thrown in there with it, but you have to order it through identitynetwork.net or call my office right now and order the brand new School of Law of Attraction. The number at the office is 205 362 713 3 3 God bless you, and we will talk to you in the next broadcast.